So. Uh, half reactions. That one. And the per manganate goes to manganese 2 plus. I'll need these half reactions. <laughs> Let's put, do the top one first. Irons are the same. There's no oxygen. There's no hydrogen. I go straight to my fourth step, which is electrons. Plus an electron. Balanced. Okay, this is probably the easiest possible one to balance right here. Okay, this one's a little more difficult, it's a little more involved. The manganese is already set, I don't have to worry about that. Go straight to the oxygen in the second step to go plus. Uh, there's four oxygens, so I better put four waters. Now for the hydrogen, there's eight there, so plus eight here. On the right hand side, I have plus two. Left hand, plus seven, so I better put a plus five here. So far, any questions? Okay, so now I find my least common multiple between five and one. Fantastic. I'll just put a five here and multiply the bottom by one. Essentially leaving the bottom the same. So, I have five ferrous ions plus uh, eight H plus plus permanganate goes to five uh, Fe3 plus plus manganese 2 plus plus 4 H2O. I think I got all that. And I think there's absolutely nothing to cancel. This is my acidic conditions answer. So what do I do? Should I stay here or should I find the basic conditions before I go on to solve the problem? Does it require basic? Uh, let me see. Doesn't say. Yeah, doesn't say what to do. Really make a difference? No. Yeah. yeah. The reason it's, that's a great observation, it's not going to make a difference if you change this to basic. You can for fun. I probably wouldn't because we're using acid earlier. Might as well leave it in acidic condition. It's even easier. And it's not going to change this mole ratio. This mole ratio is already fixed. No matter if I change it to basic or acidic, it won't change. So it's meaningless to change it. Uh, so we'll just leave it the same because I want to save ink and preserve our environment. And so now we can do the math part of the problem. Now we're doing titrate. All this, I did all this just for this mole ratio. Now let's go to the, back to the math. I'm going to start with what I know. I want to go here. I need to change this to moles. That's my key step. Go to moles first. Then do a molar ratio to get to moles here. Then I want to change it to mass. Okay, so titrations. You always go to moles, molar ratio, and then in this case I wanted mass because I want a mass percent. Okay, so that's how I'm going to go through the problem. Uh, let's see. So I'll say 40 a 1. 0.56 milliliters. I'm going to multiply that by molarity, which is 1.621 times 10 to the minus 2 moles, all divided by liters. Now when I write out my molarity, I notice my volume unit will not cancel. So I have to work on that. And the way I'm going to fix that, and this will almost always happen when you're doing a titration problem, because most of your measurements will be in milliliters, but your molarity, of course, will be in liters. Just do a simple conversion. Now I'm at moles of the permanganate. <coughs> now I'm going to use a molar ratio. Uh, I have, let's see, in my final answer here, five moles of ferrous ion for every one mole of permanganate. Five 
moles of ferrous for every one mole of uh, permanganate. Nine at moles, I want to do one more step if I can squeeze it in right here. Uh, oops. I want to change the mass of iron. And I'm going to kind of do a little fancy maneuvering at this moment. But uh, I think it'll be okay. 55, uh, let's see, it's 55.85. That's actually going to be grams of ferrous ion. Uh, we're assuming, and it's a fantastic assumption, that for every one of these came one iron. Okay? In here, everything, there's nothing charged, really. But we're assuming that there's one ferrous for every iron, wherever it came from. Okay, so this is going to give me grams, and I'm going to get 0.18... 81 grams of iron. I'll just write iron, but literally it's in a ferrous ion. Okay, so I'm going to take that number and a pen. This is the actual amount present. This is the hunk of mass I started with, so I'll just go 0 0.1881 grams divided by 0 0.3500 grams times 100%, and that's going to be 53.74%. That's in that rock, that ore that I dug up out of a hole, it's 53.74% iron. <coughs> some of that iron is ferric, some of it's ferrous. I don't care about that. I just wanted to know how much iron total there was. Wait, so that's not ferrous, it's actually both ferric and ferrous? This one, yes. Mm -hmm. So mathematically, this one, this number right here, is right, this right here. Is that okay? However, I know from the problem that all the iron, it says, got reduced to ferrous. So all iron is now this. So I don't know what percent is ferric and what's ferrous in the original rock. I just know, okay, there's that much. Okay, so we have to give an excess of H plus in order for this to work out, right? Yeah, I think most likely what they do is that once they get it, they soak it in the acid for a long period of time until they're sure the reaction's done, or at least 99% of it's done. Uh, but uh, yeah, you need an excess of acid just so you're not nervous that uh, maybe I didn't add enough. You want to make sure that the iron is the limiting reagent in this question. Yeah. Anything else?